Hi guys, today we will talk about flexible boxes or flex boxes in CSS. You might have learned about grid systems involving floating elements contained within a fixed or fluid grids of rows and columns. We will start to talk about flexible boxes. They are much easier to be written in a single specification and they automatically adapt themselves to the screen width without requiring a new layout design. One way to achieve this is through writing flexible box. A flexible box or a flex box containing items whose sizes can shrink or grow to match the boundaries of the box. Thus, unlike grid system, in which each item has a defined size, flex box items adapt themselves automatically to the size of their container. This makes Flexbox a useful tool for designing layouts that can adapt to different page sizes. Items within a Flexbox are laid out along a main axis, as you can see in this diagram, which can basically point in either the horizontal or vertical direction, and the line perpendicular to the main axis is called the cross axis, which is used to define the height and width of each item. To define an element as a Flexbox, we apply either of the two properties. Either we use the display property flex or we use the display property inline flex. The difference between the two is that the flex starts the flex box on a new line, much as a block element starts on a new line. And a value of inline flex keeps the flex box in line with its surrounding. The syntax for flex boxes has gone through several different revisions. That's why you will often find that you will have to write cross browser flex boxes to make things work across multiple browsers. So here in this picture, you can see how we can use it for different browsers. To simplify the code in examples, you will notice that WebKit a browser extension and the current W3 specifications are mainly used. But to support the older browsers, we may have to write something like that. By default, Flexbox items are arranged horizontally, starting from left and moving to the right. To change the orientation of the Flexbox, we apply Flexbox direction property, where direction is row by default, column, row reverse, or column reverse are some of the other values. The row option lays out the flex items from left to right. Column creates a vertical layout starting from the top and moving downwards. And the row reverse and column reverse options lay out the items bottom to top and right to left respectively. Flex items will all try to fit within a single line, either horizontally or vertically. But if they can't, those items can wrap to a new line as needed by applying the following flex wrap property, which is flex wrap, and then you need to mention the type. Where type is either no wrap, which is by default, or wrap to wrap the flex items to a new line, or wrap reverse to wrap flex items to a new line starting in the opposite direction from the current line. For example, you can see this rule over here in which style rules create a flex box in which the items are arranged in a column starting from the top and going down with any flex item that wraps to the second column starting from the bottom and moving up. Additional items in this flex box will continue to follow a snake-like curve with third column starting at the top moving down and so on and so forth. That's what the wrap reverse does. In this picture, you can see how you can use flex fill property to combine the row, which is the direction and the wrap property. So as you can see over here, this is how it is filling the row and wrapping. And the second example is where you can see flex fill coming in columns, but in wrap reverse order. Flex items behave a lot like floated objects through which several advantages, including that you can float them in either the horizontal or vertical direction, and that you can change the order in which they are displayed. While the size of a flex item can be fixed with the CSS width and height properties, they don't have to be. They can be flexed, automatically adapting their size to fill the flex box. A flex layout is fundamentally different from a grid layout and requires you to think about sizes and layout in a new way. When the items are allowed to flex, their rendered size is determined by three properties, the base size, the growth value, and the shrink value. So flex basis is one of the properties that allows you to set the size of your flex. Again, we will be looking at all of these properties in a little bit more detail next week. 
where you will be learning about how you can set the flask spaces, how you can set the flex growth, and how you can work with some of the other properties related to the flex, such as what is shrink rate and how you can set the flex property that can take multiple parameters, including the grow, the shrink, and the basis. And also we will try to look at some of the examples next time also where we will apply the flex layout 